everybody, I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 517. I've been helping several groups try to comply with the new Medicare credit balance rules. If you're concerned about credit balances that might be owed to Medicare and you're trying to go back and audit and understand if there's a risk or what we need to do to catch up, I'd love to help you. I want to play with the map section here of the ribbon today and show you what some of the options are and how they might make your maps a little easier to use. First one's easy. It's called Map Labels. And what you can do, if you click it, Excel will say, great, I will show you. We'll zoom in a bit. And Excel will show you labels that are based on where you are to zoom in. So as you zoom in and out, those labels respond to the zoom. And it may make information easier to find, especially if you start getting really in-depth and you want to understand the zip code and where is it. That may be very helpful for you to add map labels. Note that map labels apply even if you have a different theme. If you do something like this, or if we go, we want to show the Great Salt Lake or the Rocky Mountains or whatever it is we want to show, we still get the labels here by clicking map labels. And it's just a toggle. Turn them on, turn them off. Flat map is next. And let's back up just oh a step or two. So here's my chart. If I do a flat map from this level, it's it toggles on, toggles off. It's kind of hard to see. To really appreciate what flat map is doing, what you need is a bunch of area. Let's say I'm no longer graphing the Wasatch Front area in Utah. I'm trying to graph, let's say, the United States. If I go flat map here, and maybe let's put map labels on. This may help us appreciate how map labels are now at a very, you know, at state level. And then if I do flat map from here, watch what happens. What That's what flat map is. You see, when you have a big area and you're trying to flatten the globe, that's when you can tell the difference. If you get way down into here, the difference between flat map and no flat map is hard to see. Last thing that's helpful is find location. What you can do, let's say I happen to know that in this area where I'm trying to understand zip codes and where my patients are coming from, there is a hospital, and I, I typed it in here at 1300 East, 3900 South in Salt Lake City, Utah. So what you can do is you can enter an address there that Bing Maps can find and click Find. And what it will do when I get this out of the way is this is 1300 East, 3900 South, and there's the hospital. And so I could, now that I've located that, on my map, now I can back up a couple of steps and say, all right, now here are the major zip codes that are right around that hospital, and I can take a look at those and understand my data better. What I wish 3D Maps would do would, le would be let me put a pin there so that I could back up even further and say, okay, I have a hospital here and here and here and, and understand where those are even after I zoom out, but we're not there yet. Maybe that's a future upgrade. Custom regions is the last section, and to be honest, I've never used it. What you can do is you can import a custom shape file that says, I, the way my data is organized is this polygon-like shape instead of zip codes or instead of some other regional recognized way to identify areas. If you have a real need to identify something besides something like zip codes or county, city, state, zip kind of things, custom regions may help you. Next time, we're going to talk about the insert box this section here on the ribbon. There's a bunch more things you can do to fancy up your 3D map and we'll cover that in the next Excel video. Thanks for watching.